Ashadu anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah Ashadu anna Muhammad al-Rasulullah Hayya ala sgala حي على الصلاه حي على أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وأظهر المرسلين شفيع المذنبين وحبيب رب العالمين محمد صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم لك الحمد كله ولك الشكر كله وإليك يرجع الأمر كله على نيته وسره اللهم لك الحمد كما نقول ولك الحمد أحسن مما نقول ولك الحمد أكثر مما نقول لك الحمد حتى ترضى ولك الحمد إذا رضيت ولك الحمد بعد الرضا ولك الحمد على حمدنا إياك لك الحمد على الإسلام ولك الحمد على الإيمان لك الحمد على القرآن لك الحمد على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ولك الحمد على ما يسرته من صيام شهر رمضان اللهم يا رب فكما بلغتنا رمضان تقبل منا رمضان اللهم يا رب تقبل منا صيامنا وصلاتنا وزكاتنا واجعلنا في شهرنا هذا من المقبولين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين All praises due to Allah and may his peace and blessings be upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم Indeed, the best of speech is the book of Allah. And the best of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We bear witness that no one is worthy of worship but Allah. And we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is indeed his final messenger. All praise is due to Allah for guiding us to this beautiful deen, Islam. All praise is due to Allah for giving us this beautiful book, the Quran. And all praises due to Allah for sending us the most beautiful human being, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And all praises due to Allah for facilitating for us and extending our lives to witness the blessings of the month of Ramadan. For this we are grateful and we beg of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we be amongst those who have been accepted during the month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our fasting and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our deeds in this blessed month of Ramadan. Ya Ahmada Rasulullah sallallahu rabbi wa salamuhu alayhi yaqul al-Nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lissa'imi farhatan farhatun inda fitrihi wa farhatun inda liqa'i rabbihi The Prophet peace be upon him so beautifully said that the believer has two moments of rejoicing at the end of fasting. He said that the believer rejoices when they break their fast in the fitrihi, either every day or at the end of the month of Ramadan. We rejoice. And then he also said, and there is another moment that the believer is going to rejoice and that is when we meet our Creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma ya Rabbi kama afrahtana inda fitrina, Allahumma ya Rabbi fa'as'idna bi liqa'ika ya Rabbil alameen. 
The same way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really made us happy and rejoice, breaking our fast, we beg of Him that we also rejoice and that we are happy on the day that we meet Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is subhanAllah such a beautiful hadith where the Prophet peace be upon him is telling us that a believer actually gets to rejoice. And by the way, the rejoicing here is not because now we can go back and eat and drink. See, remember, we were never fully deprived of eating and drinking. If we are just rejoicing from now on, I can have my cup of coffee in the morning, that is really not the real meaning of rejoicing. If we are saying that now I can stop by and grab breakfast on the way, that is not the meaning of rejoicing. In order to understand this, there is another statement that the Prophet ﷺ has made that clears this one. Truly a believer is one who rejoices his good deeds. And truly a believer is one who is disappointed as himself when he makes poor choices and takes poor actions in life. In other words, what the Prophet ﷺ is telling us that we are rejoicing at the end of the month of Ramadan is that we are rejoicing a beautiful accomplishment. And that accomplishment is fasting during the month of Ramadan, practicing self-restraint, practicing abstinence, practicing self-control and self-discipline. The Prophet ﷺ said that this is an occasion that is worthy of celebration. To celebrate this. Because subhanAllah, they say that true happiness, true meaningful happiness should not be confused with entertainment. Meaningful happiness should not be confused with entertainment. Sometimes we think we are happy when in reality we are being entertained. Watching TV is not happiness, it is entertainment. So now what we've been told is that truly meaningful happiness comes from what is it that we have done. Especially when we have got the conscience where the Prophet ﷺ taught us that do the good and naturally the doing of good would lead you to feel good. Don't do good to feel good, that is selfishness. But he said naturally the doing of good leads you to feel good and that is not only about the month of Ramadan but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this promise not only that you rejoice during the month of Ramadan but in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised man amila salihan min dhakarin aw untha fala nuhiyyannahu hayatun tayyiba whoever believes be they males or females, and then they do righteous deeds, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised them, فَلَا نُحْيِيَّنَّهُ حَيَاطًا طَيِّبًا We shall indeed grant them a beautiful life, a life that is worth rejoicing, a life that is worth celebrating. So as believers, we believe that belonging to this beautiful deen, one way, that it manifests itself and reflects itself, subhanAllah, that you are a happy person. Wallahi, part of the deen is that we're happy people. Unlike what we've been taught or the erroneous impression that we have sometimes is that the more religious you become, the more miserable you appear. The more religious you become, the sadder and the meaner that you look. And reality is we are taught that subhanallah, the more religious you are, the more balanced your life becomes. The happier you are, the more content that you are, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, believe and do good deed, and you shall find that your life is hayatun tayyibah. It's a beautiful life. Not only this, but moreover the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to really drive this point home, He's being asked, Ya Rasulullah, ma ahabbu al-a'mali ila Allah. O Messenger of Allah, what is the most beloved deed in the estimation, in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And you would think that you are asking a religious person. And a religious person, you would think that they would give you a set of rituals. Praying too much, 
fasting a lot, giving in charity, and then all of the sudden the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Sururun tudkhiluhu ala qalbi mri'in Muslim." He said it is about celebration, rejoicing that you put into the heart of a believer, making somebody else happy. Subhanallah, you know that in today's psychology, we are taught that one of the quickest ways of making yourself happy is to make sure that somebody else becomes happy. Make somebody else happy and that will inevitably, almost immediately make you happy. You know, subhanallah, they say that everything that we share diminishes. You know, when we have and you start sharing, it becomes so smaller and smaller with the exception of happiness. The more you share it, you are in reality doubling it. And we know this amongst ourselves. You know, when you have a, when you hear a nice joke, what happens? You go all day long telling it to people. And sometimes you even just come up with an excuse to tell people a funny joke. Because it's so funny and you just can't wait and you want to share it with as many people as possible. But see, the joke does not get duller as you're telling it. What happens is that subhanallah, the more people you tell, the more happiness you've just introduced to more people. And it is not diminishing, but subhanallah, in reality, you're just doubling the joy. So the day of Eid, brothers and sisters, is the day that we are happy, and it is also the day that we introduce happiness to those who are around us. That is one of the meanings of Eid that cannot just be escaped. Please make sure that you're happy. Wallahi, and remember this, happiness is a personal responsibility. Don't wait for somebody else to make you happy. It is a personal responsibility. It is our responsibility to make ourselves happy. The minute we depend and wait for somebody else to make us happy, we become emotionally dependent and we lose our own emotional independence. And that is the worst type of slavery. When you wait for somebody else to make you feel. So in reality, remember that subhanallah, that happiness is a personal responsibility. Another point. Part of our responsibility also is to make sure that we become a source of happiness to those who are around us. As fathers, husbands, brothers, as mothers, wives, and sisters, that we see it, that our presence where we are is that we become a source of happiness. That we become a source of happiness, subhanAllah. That is part of our deen. That me being here, me being there, you being here or you being there, it means that wherever we go, we are able to put a smile on those who are around us. So please, brothers and sisters, make sure that our presence in our homes really becomes a source of happiness and a comfort for our brothers and sisters and our families. That is the first point. The second and the final point, the day of Eid, is really the time to mend relationships. Allah, the day of Eid is the time that we mend broken relationships. How can we say that today we are celebrating, but yet in one way we are celebrating, another way we still have bad relationships with those who are close to us? How can we say that I am celebrating Eid and Alhamdulillah, I fasted, but I'm still not talking to my brother? or I'm not in good terms with my wife or my husband, or I have abandoned my parents or my children, that cannot be. If we are fasting, because Allah said, Kutiba alaykum siyam that fasting has been prescribed upon you, the same Quran, the same word, is also the one that said, bihi wal -arham. Be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in his name that you invoke when you're asking one another, I ask you by God to do this and I ask you by Allah to do this. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, be mindful of your kinships. Be mindful of your relationships. And subhanAllah, again, they go hand in hand. Harvard University, they did a study. They invited entrepreneurs, people who made money, people who are making money, people who are inspiring to make money. And they were asking them, what is it that makes you happy? 
And these are people who have got the money. And they found out that at the end of this survey, and they surveyed over 1,500 people, they found out that what really makes people happy is meaningful relationships. Meaningful, healthy relationships is what makes people happy. Ask people who have a lot of money, but they don't have good relationship with their children. And they will tell you, I will give up all the money that I have if I can only have a proper relationship with my husband, with my wife, or with my child. And for this, brothers and sisters, we have to make sure that subhanAllah, part of the surur, the happiness of the Prophet, peace be upon him, part of celebrating the day of Eid is that our relationship with those who are around us is a healthy relationship that we fix and we mend and we rectify these broken relationships. You know, yesterday at the khutbah, I reminded in our community, I reminded the people, please reach out to the people. Because in the hadith, the Prophet وسلم, said something that is subhanAllah, just absolutely awesome and beautiful. See, sometimes having tension in a relationship, that is natural. You know, it happens between parents, it happens between husband and wife. That is natural. We're not saying that should never have problems. But then, the Prophet وسلم, speaking about this. How you react to the problem is really what determines. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَخَيْرُهُمَا الَّذِي يَبْدَأُ بِالسَّلَامِ Sallu ala Rasulullah. He said that when people have these tensions amongst them, he said that the best amongst them, the better of the two, is the one who initiates the peace. Is the one who initiates the peace. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said he is the better of them. He is the best of them. Would you not want to be better, best, according to the definition of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? But see, you know what happens is that our ego comes in the way. Our pride, and unfortunately, sometimes our arrogance comes in the way. Say, I sent the last text. I made the last phone call. I was the one who called him 20 years ago, but he has not returned my call yet. Yeah, but that was 20 years ago. So the Prophet sallallahu said, وَخَيْرُهُمَا الَّذِي يَبْدَأُ بِالسَّلَامِ The better in the two is the one who initiates peace. Please initiate peace. Reminded people of this. Sister came to me after the khutbah and she was disappointed. She said, you know, Shaykh, I really wanted to do what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa taught us. I haven't been in speaking terms with my brother for the past seven years. We prayed at the same masjid. I saw him. We made eye contact. And I went to give, him, to give him a hug, but my brother turned and he walked away from me. Wallahi, that breaks heart. Wallahi, that destroys spirits. Because here you are, somebody's going to do this and they just, subhanAllah, in a very cold way, they look around and they walk away. Sister called and she said, Sheikh, I have not hugged my father. And I went to hug my father and my father said, stop, stop, don't, don't come any closer. Ya subhanaka rabbi. Ya subhanaka rabbi. Can we really say that these are meaningful, healthy relationships when we are unable to connect with our loved ones in such a basic way? Brothers and sisters, that is not acceptable. So please, inshallah, if you have fasted this month of Ramadan, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our fasting, Ya Rabbul Alameen. If we have fasted, then we want to see two things. We want to celebrate and we want to be happy, not entertained. And the other thing is that we want to make sure that our relationships are actually being fixed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fix our relationships, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fastaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafurur rahim. Alhamdulillah wa kafa wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihil mustafa wa ala man bi athari aqtafa. The month of Ramadan, such a beautiful month, subhanAllah. And the departure of the month of Ramadan is disappointing. Because some of us have seen this change that we have not noticed in ourselves before. We were so concerned at the beginning that, you know, this is going to be Ramadan in the month of July and in the month of August. It's going to be hot. It's going to be a long day. And oh my God, do you know what's going to happen to us? Alhamdulillah, only good happened to us.
Nothing happened to us. To the contrary, people would say, it was an easy month, subhanAllah. And all the things that we thought were impossible prior to the month of Ramadan, they became very possible. Man, if I don't have my cup of coffee in the morning, I cannot operate. I cannot think straight if I don't have coffee. If I don't smoke my cigarette in the morning, man, I, there is nothing that I can do. But subhanAllah comes the month of Ramadan. And all of this, what we thought was impossible, became very possible. Most of us thought that, you know what, coming to the masjid twice a day, Fajr and Isha and praying for as long as we did, man, I don't have the time to do this. But subhanAllah, somehow in the month of Ramadan, we were able to do this. Ramadan gives us a spiritual high. Unfortunately, as soon as the month departs, the letdowns begin. As somebody so nicely put it, he said, Sheikh, today is really the day of Eid. So how come? He said, I can feel the letdowns around me. So I'm feeling it, he said. I can just feel them going back to work. And subhanAllah said that, you know what, they will go back to work. But there is a way to fight back. And it is keeping the good habits that we have started in the month of Ramadan. Please keep coming to the masjid. Masjid is not only open during the month of Ramadan. I promise you the masjid will be, pro will be open after the month of Ramadan as well. We still have access to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We still can do charity. We still can do so many things. So inshallah, please, every good habit that we were able to bring into our days in the month of Ramadan, please keep that alive. Please keep that alive. Keep coming to the masjid and keep spending time with your families. And also the people that we prayed for during the month of Ramadan, are still in need of our prayers. People who are not feeling well, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them a speedy recovery, Ya Rabbil Alameen. People who've passed away, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless their souls. Nations that are not doing well, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring them peace. We want to pray for the people of Syria. That may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroy the oppressors and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save the innocent. We want to pray for the people of Egypt that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide them and protect the innocent, Ya Rabbil Alameen. We want to pray for the people of Iraq. Did you know that this month of Ramadan was the deadliest month in Iraq? Wallahi, the month of Rahmah was the deadliest month in Iraq. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them peace, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And you can say the same thing about the people of Gaza and the people of Afghanistan and the people of Burma and the people of Kashmir and the entire continent of Africa and the list just goes on and on and on. If we cannot do anything, then at least please remember the same people in our prayers. And then finally also, on behalf of the Masjid, we want to extend a sincere Eid Mubarak to you and to your families if we have not seen you. Begging of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he accepts our fasting, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Also on behalf of the masjid and on your behalf, we'd like to extend a sincere condolences to our brother, uh, Qar Yusuf al dagush who this community is very familiar with. His father passed away in Morocco. He had a beautiful death as we've been told. His father fasted the month of Ramadan and then he came to the Eid prayers. And he passed away while he was in the Eid prayers inside the masjid in the state of sujood, prostrating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قَالْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ إِذَا أَحَبَّ عَبْدًا قَبِضَهُ عَلَىٰ عَمَلٍ يَرْضَاهُ لَهُ And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with one of his servants, he facilitates for him a good deed during which that becomes his moment of departure from this world. And subhanAllah, isn't that beautiful? Meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just finishing the month of Ramadan and coming to the masjid and going down on your face. And that is the minute you meet your creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma ya rabbi rizuqna husna al-khitam. Allahumma ya rabbi tawfana wa anta radin anna. Allahumma arham mawtana. Wa shfi mardana. Wa fukka asrana. Wa aafi mubtalana. Wa khtum bil baqiyati salihati ajalana. Allahumma innaka afuun kareemun tuhibbu al-afu wa fa'afu anna. اللهم فرج هم المهمومين ونفس كرب المكروبين واقض الدين عن المدينين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم يا رب اجعلنا ممن قبلت صيامهم 
اللهم اجعلنا ممن قبلت صيامهم اللهم يا رب اجعلنا ممن قبلت صيامهم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقم الصلاة